the morning news in Dallas County stated that I had signed a confession, that I had confessed to the killing of Robert Wood, that this and that, and they had their killer and they were ready to go with it. The statement that I signed for Dallas County was never and never would have been anything as a confession, quote, but yet they labeled it as such. Of course, I couldn't dispute this because I didn't even know about it. I heard no news. I knew nothing for two weeks. They kept me completely away from everybody. When a Florida jury found Casey Anthony not guilty of murdering her two-year-old daughter Kaylee, a great cry went up from the American public that hadn't been heard since the O.J. Simpson verdict in 1995. What happened? How could the jury be so stupid? What's wrong with our justice system that it could let a clearly guilty person go free? But if the Anthony verdict made you mad, you should be even more troubled when our justice system does the opposite, and not only convicts someone of a crime they didn't commit, but sentences them to death for it. This is what happened to Randall Adams, who was convicted of killing a police officer in Texas in 1976. But when former detective turned filmmaker Errol Morris learned about Adam's case, he decided to make a documentary about it called The Thin Blue Line, a movie so compelling that it got Adams released from prison. Adams was a drifter looking for work near Dallas when he crossed paths with David Harris, a troubled, armed teenage runaway in the midst of a crime spree. Through reenactments and extensive interviews with Adams, Harris, law enforcement, Adams' lawyers, and the judge and witnesses involved in the case, we see how this chance encounter and Texas's obsession with quick, deadly justice almost got an innocent man executed. What we see in the thin blue line is a cavalcade of examples and reenactments illustrating why cases can be so riddled with human errors, prejudices, personal foibles, and bad luck that our justice system should not be allowed to mete out a punishment as permanent and irrevocable as killing someone. Eyewitness testimony, often considered the most reliable evidence in a case, is shown to be wildly inaccurate and sometimes given in exchange for leniency in unrelated cases. The expert testimony of a psychiatrist known as Dr. Death for his record of condemning murder suspects is used to prove that Adams is a dangerous sociopath that would kill again if released. Key evidence for the defense is inexplicably barred or ignored, and the biases of law enforcement and the judge are allowed to influence the verdict. And through interviews with David Harris, his friends, and a policeman who knew Harris and his criminal record well, we're given a chilling portrait of a cold-blooded man clearly capable of the murder Adams was convicted of. If you still support the death penalty despite the over 130 inmates who later had their death row convictions overturned, the thin blue line should shake your belief to its core with its meticulous deconstruction of how a state and a culture can become so obsessed with delivering harsh, frontier-style justice that it prioritizes the desire to punish over questions of guilt or innocence. It amazes me how Republicans can claim that our government can't do anything well, yet demands that it be the ultimate arbiter in matters of life or death, whether it be capital punishment or going to war. In most cases, human judgments are too flawed infallible to be used as the basis for taking someone's life, a decision that can never be undone. And with a thorough debunking of the myths that the death penalty saves money and deters crime, it's time that America joins the rest of the industrialized world and abolishes the death penalty for good. I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review.